Welcome to 2084. Hi, we're Blooper Team, and today we want to walk you through the cyberpunk dystopian world of our new game, Observer. If you played our first game, Layers of Fear, you know that we make a different kind of horror. Something a bit more cerebral, emotional, and psychological. We like to call it hidden horror. I'm with the KPD, if that's what you're asking. Seriously? We haven't had a cop around these parts in... We think of yeah, hidden horror yeah. as a subgenre. Well, yeah. There are a million different types of action yeah. games out there, but you don't see that kind of diversity in horror games. Most horror games are designed completely around survival. Someone or something is trying to kill you, zombies usually, and you must survive using whatever weapons you can find, like machine guns and grenade launchers and the occasional machete. A few people who played Layers of Fear went into the experience expecting survival horror and were naturally disappointed in our lack of machetes and missile launchers. So let's clear up that confusion right now. What is hidden horror? We define it using two main ideas. The first is the subject. What is this game about? The axis on which the whole story and gameplay revolves. In Layers of Fear, the subject dealt with the edge of sanity. That cliff where sanity ends and insanity begins, and then jumping right over. In Observer, the subject is the boundaries of our own humanity. Where does our humanity begin, and where does it end? The proverbial fight between man and the machines we create. The deepening reliance on technology in our everyday lives. How that technology can be used as a tool, but also as a weapon. Don't be afraid. Don't After the subject, down. the second element of hidden horror is catharsis. We want to scare you in such a way that you are going to feel a release. We want to draw out the horror that hides within you. The horror that hides within us all. We'll help you to confront those fears. Look them straight in the eye and let them go. Damn it. Still no connection. Listen One of the fans of Layers of Fear put it best. So that's what it feels like to be insane. Whoever's responsible for this, if you help me find him. So what does it feel like to be an observer? Observers are neural detectives. They have the authority to hack people's minds and relive their memories as a way to solve crimes. The device on Dan's wrist is the DR3AT, or as it's known to observers, the Dream Eater. The Dream Eater is what allows Dan to hack into people. The idea of inserting yourself into the mind of another is just one of the ways we test the boundaries of humanity, the boundaries of the individual. If someone is inside your head, are you in fact you anymore? Is the ability to force the deepest memories from a person morally acceptable? One could argue it's a new form of psychological rape. That's certainly how the Class C citizens of Krakow feel here in the year 2084. They are scared to death of observers and refer to them as a leeches. If you read the tech headlines of today, this frightening future doesn't feel that far off. We already overshare on social media. We are also beginning to augment ourselves with implants like RFID chips and prosthetics. Has technology changed you? Are you being influenced without being aware of it? So These are the type I hope you heard that. See, these modern games are promoting what? The RFID chip, man. Radio frequency identification. Which is also known as the mark of the beast according to the scriptures, man. Yeah? So I'd like to say Shalom, Shalom. Brakfa Ya Bashmashai, the bonus to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Blessings, salutations to the elect, blessings and comfort to the sincere men, women, and children man, that are destined to repent. These games are even these modern games are even promoting um, the mark of the beast, the RFID chip, man, which is recorded in the scriptures and Revelations 13 and 16. And if you with this chip, you can't buy or sell. Um, 
radio frequency, our bodies contain, um, are connected to waves of frequency. So therefore they can tune into our emotions and stuff like that. So it's going to be more of a, a mind controlling thing, man. Once you take that chip, you're in total subjection to the white man. And if you take that chip, according to the, according to the Bible, man, you're destined, destined for destruction. There's no hope for you. No hope for you, man. You're going to be burned by the nukes or whatever disaster is coming. So Israel better repent. We so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans and Hispanics better repent. Questions we want you to ask yourself as you play Observer. One of the reasons people enjoy horror, enjoy nightmarish monsters scaring the daylights out of us in movie theaters around the world, is that it relieves tension. That's what catharsis is, emotional release. But in games, you make the choices. You decide what happens. That's much more powerful than simply watching a movie on a screen. You experience and interact with the horror yourself. Because of this, you are constantly asking yourself as you play, why am I afraid? Why does this feel wrong? What am I really afraid of? In this dystopian future, if you really stop and think about these questions, you'll experience what we like to call catharsis 2.0. This is a release from fears you didn't even know you had. That's some next level catharsis right there. Is it morally acceptable to hack a person's mind? Even if the person gives their consent, the observer will have complete access to that person's entire memory. They can find, take, and use whatever they want. These memories are a private part of this man's life. Detective Lazarski is just plowing right through it. Dan is driven to go as deep as he possibly can to find the truth. In this man's mind, we will learn that he's an ex-con, a recovering drug addict. So we will see the bars of his mental prison he has created for himself, the chains of addiction that hold him back. Some people may rush through this and not notice. But those of us who stop and think about what we are seeing will experience something quite a bit more nuanced and layered. Everything is a symbol. Everything has meaning. The question is, what does it mean to you? At its heart, Observer is a mystery. And you will no doubt have a lot of questions building up as you play. These are your questions. If you stop and think about them, you may find your own answers and maybe even a bit of release. That's the kind of horror we want to make at Blooper Team. That's hidden horror. Thanks for watching. We'll have a lot more Observer to share with you soon, and we can't wait for you to play Observer for yourself when it releases later this year. Until then, ask yourself, what would you do if your fears were hacked? you do if your mind was hacked that's exactly what the white man does wants to do should I say that's why he's coming out of all these smart TVs that keep an eye on you no more privacy even these game consoles you have to um, access it with your voice input meaning what the device is always listening Always recording. But with this RFID chip, he has total control, man. Of, of the frequencies that run through your body, your emotions. You see? The so called white man, which is known as Esau according to the Bible, who's forever doomed. And who is the one running this uh, empire, this this world, this society? And next will be the nation of Israel, which is unique. Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans and Hispanics that will be ruling next. Starting with the elect. Because 
the rest of our people, two thirds of our people will die and be destroyed because they're being rebellious, man. But nevertheless, Esau, the so-called white man, he's doing whatever it takes to control. He wants to mainly control us, us Israelites. As you can see in the movie Get Out, they're fascinated with our physiques, uh, our, att our attributes, our abilities, our intelligence. They want our bodies, they, they want our minds, they want to be us. They want the blessing that... Um, that they gave up and was taken by Jacob, you know. But all they do is is pure evil, promote wickedness, promote lawlessness, man. That's why this earth is in shambles. Um, homosexuality is, is is being promoted in a high scale. Adultery is being promoted in a high scale. Um, the white man he just goes and conquers, destroys, and replaces countries with his influence makes everybody subject to him go to him of all things it's in the scripture you know the book of Genesis chapter 25 Genesis chapter 28 and 27 it talks about the blessings of Jacob and bless blessings of Esau and Esau's blessing was to what um, to have the fatness of the earth meaning what to subdue the earth and its riches and wealth. That's why you got countries like Africa. They're, they're, they're rich in their, their minerals and resources, but and but who's getting the best of it? Esau, the so-called white man. You see? And making other countries poorer. False trades. Leeching. Of countries, oils and diamonds, resources, whatever the case is. Buying it, buying it cheap, set, selling it expensive. This is this is the Esau's world, the so-called white man's world, man. Yeah, this is his heaven and this is our hell, and we need to get the fuck out of it. But you need to repent and seek Yahweh by Shema Shai, man. Yeah. The Father's name is Yahweh, the Son is Yahweh Shai, who the world calls Jesus Christ. Yeah, according to the Bible, Revelations 1 13, Jeremiah 14 2, our Lord and Savior, who you call Jesus Christ, is a so called black man, man. Yeah, and that's the truth, man. And he's called the elect to repent, and we've got better hope that we're uh, the elect, as the men of the Lord keep pushing this truth, going out on the highways and byways and teaching. Our people to the elect to, to to repent follows the commandments, and statutes, and laws to the best of our ability. Have faith in our our power, our Lord, and keep grinding, man. But there you go, you know. And also, Esau's blessing was with the sword, uh, a killing instrument. Now it could be a literal, literal, a literal device that. Um, kills, but and it also could be the the mark of the beast. It's a device, and it also kills as well. And because they're coming out with um, witnesses coming out with, well, they even put it on news that the RFID chip has what cyanide or some chem chemicals that can kill the body. You know, so what if the chip malfunctions or um. You might try to retaliate, try to take out the chip from your body. And signals might, might be sent to the person that, that owns the chip. And next thing you know, the liquid is going through your body, through your veins, and you're dying a painful death. So that's a killing instrument. Esau lives by the sword. That's, it. that's what's in the scriptures. So Israel, you better repent, man. Because they even promote it in games, man. You know? Lord Winner, I'm going to do another video because they've even promoted the RFID chip in one of the most popular games in the world, which is Call of Duty. Now, every guy must know about Call of Duty, man. He must have banged that out before, or at least heard of it, because that's one of the most uh, popular games out there. And, they, and that game promotes the RFID chip, Call of Duty, um, Affinity Warfare, something like that. One of the recent ones. So... 
I'm probably going to get some footage over that as well. Showing you that Esau is promoting it in his movies, promoting it in the, the music, promoting it in games, bruv. See? The scriptures cover cover everything of reality. Even games, games are showing you biblical um biblical prophecies should i say i'm showing you can you believe that this is why the the word is so beautiful because the word covers reality man the scriptures cover what's happening in real life and it, some people might see this video and say what the hell is this guy talking about guys talking about the bible and he's talking about games but guess what the game is talking about the bible the RFID chip. You heard the person say RFID chip. <coughs> so what does that tell you, man? Scriptures is, is just beautiful. Scriptures is the one and holy true book, man. The holy holy book, man. It's got a book of prophecies. That's what these other books, like the Quran, don't have, man. Prophecies. Talk about things from the future. And we're witnessing it. They're putting it in their games. They're putting it in their movies. They're putting it in the mu music industries. Flashing it before your eyes. Why? Trying to make you comfortable. Telling you the good things about the chip, the RFID chip, the mark of the beast. Oh, if anything goes missing with this chip, oh, you won't lose anything. You will know where your children are. Oh, that sounds nice. That sounds sweet. I want to get that. That's how they get you. Advertisement, marketing, softening you up. But at the end of it, there's destruction. Your own soul will be taken and controlled. No more privacy. The liquid inside is going to cause death. If you try to resist, they may kill you. Or set up your family to get the chip. So, it can, so they can bribe you to get the chip. Or they just kill you and your family. So... We, as men of the Lord, Lord Win, Yahab, Hashem, we got to die for this truth, man. we got to reject this RFID chip, reject Esau's devices, yeah, and stick and have faith with Yahab, Hashem, Hashem, man. Because the world, Esau's world, is coming to an end. But within that end, there's going to be a great struggle, great chaos, great destruction, great division, great wars, great power struggles. Losing families, losing friends, many deaths, martial law, concentration camps, animal, animal, wild animals let loose and killing people, people shooting, murdering, stabbing, stealing, looting. It's going to be total chaos. And there will be a great Independence Day. There will be a great deliverance. While in the midst of this destruction, the Lord Yahweh Bashi Mashai will return. With his holy angels, man. So with that, I'm gonna say shalom.